Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to solve for the profit maximizing output and price for a monopoly. Then we're going to figure out the monopoly's profit and the deadweight loss that it causes to society. To start out, we are going to solve our monopoly problem with Q or output as the choice variable. This means we're going to have to put everything that we have in terms of Q. In front of us, we've got a demand function, Q equals 100 minus 0.5P, and our cost function, 200 plus 0.5Q squared. You can see that our cost function is in terms of Q, but our demand function is Q as a function of P. This means we're going to have to first find our inverse demand function by solving our demand function for P instead of Q. I'll start by taking our demand function here and adding 0.5p to both sides and subtracting q to both sides. That's going to move my 0.5p over here and my q over here. To solve for p I just need to multiply both sides by 2. That's going to get rid of my 1 half on the left hand side and give me 200 minus 2q. This is our inverse demand function. To do the profit maximization, we need to set marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. So first we're going to have to actually solve for those things. Revenue is price times quantity. We've just solved for our price here with our inverse demand function. So I'm going to take 200 minus 2Q times Q. That's going to be my revenue. Marginal revenue is simply the first derivative of our revenue function. Let's actually go ahead and multiply out our revenue here to get 200q minus 2q squared. Take the derivative of this, we get 200 minus 4q. This reveals a useful shortcut, which is when we have a linear inverse demand function, the marginal revenue function is always the same as the inverse demand, but with double the slope. So we've gone from a slope of negative 2 to negative 4. To get my marginal cost function, I'll simply take the first derivative of the cost function. The derivative of 200 is 0. The derivative of 0.5q squared is q. To maximize profit, I'm going to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. So I'm going to get 200 minus 4q equals q. Now all I only need to do here is solve for q. So we're going to get 200 equals 5q. If I add 4q to both sides, divide both sides by 5, I'm going to get q equals 40. I'll denote this as qm for our profit maximizing monopoly quantity. To get the price, I will substitute my monopoly quantity into the inverse demand function that we saw right here. Monopoly price will be 200 minus 2 times 40, which is 120. And that is how to figure out the profit maximizing quantity and price for a monopoly. Now that we know the quantity and price, we can figure out how much profit our monopoly is making. I'll write out the profit here as revenue minus cost. Revenue here is price times quantity, so we get 120 times 40. Cost, get right for my cost function. 200 in fixed cost and 0.5 times quantity squared, which is 40 squared. Multiply this out and we get 4800 minus 200 minus 0.5 times 1600. That leaves us with 3800 profit. The last thing that we want to do here is solve for our deadweight loss. But before we do that, it's always a good idea to draw a graph. Recall that our inverse demand function was 200 minus 2q. So I'm going to draw that in first. The demand curve is going to hit the quantity axis at 100, as we can see right here. 
I'm then going to draw my marginal revenue curve, which remember has double the slope of the demand curve. That means the marginal revenue curve will hit the horizontal axis here at 50. Next, I will draw my marginal cost curve. It's going to look something like this. The profit maximizing quantity will be where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, which is right here. That happens, as we know, at 40. If we continue this dotted line upward, we can see where that quantity crosses the demand curve, and that's going to tell us what our price will be. As we know, that is 120. The deadweight loss in this market is going to be the difference in total social welfare from the socially optimal outcome and the actual monopoly outcome that we see. The socially optimal outcome is going to happen where marginal cost crosses demand, which is right here. Let's solve for that. Marginal cost, remember, is Q. Set that equal to our price based on our inverse demand function, 200 minus 2Q. Add 2Q to both sides, we get 3Q equals 200. Divide by 3, we get Q equals 200 thirds, which is 66 and 2 thirds. I'll write that in here. While 200 thirds is the socially optimal quantity, the quantity that actually happens due to the monopoly is 40. The monopoly is only interested in its own profit, not in the socially optimal outcome, so they're going to produce too little. The additional social welfare that society can gain by moving from the monopoly outcome to the socially optimal outcome is given by this triangle right here. To figure out the area of this triangle, we need to figure out what is its base and what is its height. We already know that this point is 120. We now have to figure out what is this point. Well, we know that this is the marginal cost where marginal cost meets marginal revenue. We can easily figure this out because remember that marginal cost equals Q, and if Q is 40, marginal cost is also 40. We now have everything we need to figure out the deadweight loss. It's a triangle, so we have 1 half times base times height. Base is 120 minus 40. The height is 200 thirds minus 40. This comes out to 3200 thirds, which is 1066 and 2 thirds. That's everything you need to know about how to maximize profit for a monopoly and figure out what that profit is as well as the deadweight loss caused by the monopoly power. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.